janë gjithë më nga di Në shi Bor Diel Gjdo dit ata zgjohen Përgatitem Spikasim Për të arritur qëllimet e tyre Për të bërjetën më të mire Për ata që i ka në mendje gjdo moment Për ata që janë atje Në vend lindje Ne, në ria dhe izi pej E dim se sa e rëndësishme është familia Kjo është arsyria Se dërgesat me ne Janë më të shpejta Të sigurta dhe të lira Ria mani transfer dhe izi pej Dërgojmë para Aty ku vërtet ka rëndësi Shkuas të Algjufi e TV, mirë mrama, mirë se vjene të emisioni i radhës zëri i diasporës. Për ju sa në të kam zonë njushën, valjona plana nga shtetë bashkumet të Amerikës dhe Edina Osmanovic nga Malizi, me të cila do bashkomunikojnë në gjuhën angleze për arsye se janë shumë atë përgadinë në gjuhën angleze, me shenë se ka së dhjutë gjuhën angleze të që të dyjat. Nga shtetë të bashkumit të Amerikës e gemë, Valona është ekspertë dhe një ose mirë e mardhanje ndërkomtare, specializuara në mardhanjet e Balkanit dhe Evropës lindore, ndërsa Edina është ekonomistë dhe entreprenërë, dhe me thonë, po se ka këtyjë fakultetin ekonomisë, o këtyjë mrapa në Maltezi dhe shef mundësin dhe ka fillot punoj me aktivitetet ndryshme që të inkuadrohat, që ta shef shosërin e malit zi se si të hecet për para. Ne nga dy mësafirit do të nëtojnë të marëm sa ma shumë informata në lidhe me Lvizit në Ukrajin që ndodhen, qëfar në dikimi do të ka në Balkan, dhe populata e malit zi, me qenë se është pjesë ndjeshme e Balkanit, të shifet se apo të nërpin disa opinione se si po gjinin tani, si po e shofin të ardhme në tyne, edhe si e kam pa të ardhme në tyne dhe rime tani, e si do mos të rrit rajonit. Zonja Usha Valonë, mirë se vinit të kemisioni zëri diasporës. Parim derit shumë. Edina, thank you very much for joining us from Montenegro. Thank you as well for inviting me dhe përshëndet i gjithëve. Falim dhe të dhe njëherë, we're going to go in English. Ms. Valona, we had yesterday the President of the United States addressing the nation, or Congress. After what's happened in Ukraine and what's going on there, what is the mood of the United States? And what did you take on the President's address? What do you think he said and his plans are based on that? The State of Union um, in the U.S. that happens with every presidential uh, administration yearly, um, it is the opportunity for the president to sort of across the aisle from both parties um, to establish a conversation, to address issues, to bring the country together and see where, where the plans are going. Uh, in particular with the Ukraine situation, um, there was an overwhelming support. Um, however, it has been short of providing direct military humanitarian support at this time. But moving forward, um, perhaps the engagement will be will continue on humanitarian basis, whether it is medical supplies, food that is uh, perhaps needed in the near future as well as to bring support from the European allies um, in this effort to sort of deter Russian aggression in, in Ukraine as well as the region. Um, Edina, okay. in Montenegro, considering that we have uh, changes in the politics, uh, Technically, there is no government in, to my knowledge, there is no government in, in, in uh, Montenegro plus Ukraine uh, movements that happen or attack in Ukraine by Russia. How does, the, how does it affect the normal life and normal people in, in, in Montenegro? Uh, knowing that you are not expert on that field, but as, at least as a young individual, you feel uh, the, the environment in a way. 
Um, as, as you said, I'm definitely not a political analyst, but I can tell you my opinion as a young person from uh, Montenegro. Um, as you mentioned, uh, Montenegro is definitely currently going through a quite difficult political situation. We have a lot of uh, political instability and insecurity. Um, the, the government we elected obviously uh, failed, so we have some other negotiations going on. Unfortunately, some political leaders are, been, um, are being a bit ex extreme and they're leading uh, some sort of politics from the, back from the 90s. They're pulling people back into thinking about a war again. And uh, there is a lot of tensions in between people. You can definitely feel that. And uh, with this current situation with the Ukraine, people are just being watching the news every single day because uh, once when you went through a war and as Montenegro and Balkan region did, you cannot forget those things. And that is very sensitive for, for people from this um, region. And uh, but regarding Montenegro, they are standing uh, like we're standing strong with our um, NATO allies, with the uh, European Union. We think that um, obviously um, war is not a solution. No war is good. No one wants that. No one needs that. It is just leading towards misery. And um, that is that is definitely the, the opinion of, of Montenegro regarding this topic. Considering that the, the war in Kosovo and ex of Yugoslavia at the time when it happened, you were probably just born then. Um, how do you think that Montenegro at that time had been quite uh, well presenting themselves and more or less helping uh, everyone where they can, but they avoid the internal conflict? Do you think internal conflict? Do you think that they have uh, the ability again to pull together and to overcome the situation and to move on, uh, considering that they have a bit of experience from other neighbors 20 years ago, which is not long time ago? Yeah, as you said, um, I, I wasn't even born uh, back then. I'm uh, I'm born in '97, but um, I'm, I'm, I quite know a lot regarding these situations. And um, regarding your question, what I can say is that um, people of Montenegro, especially youth, we want to see Montenegro prospering. We want to see Montenegro moving forward, the EU moving towards something that is way better than this. We don't want to go back. We don't want to go backwards. And I think that Montenegro has the capacity. The only thing they need to do is that political leaders need to sit down, talk, listen to each other, uh, put the tensions down as much as they can and um, not not bringing back some some topics that are obviously offensive. We should be more tolerant and just cherish, cherish the diversity we, we are having in, in Montenegro. Considering the diversity you have, you got majority Serb, uh, Montenegrin, Serb and Albanians. Uh, you as a young an activist, young individual and activist, have you have you seen any initiative for bringing the young people together at least uh, from all all kind of uh, minorities or or, or uh, nationalities so they can actually set a set some kind of uh, path towards the future without uh, accepting the diversity rather than being uh, kind of creating conflicts in between. Uh, well, um, it, it's an interesting question. I'm currently working as a um, program coordinator in youth exchanges and youth mobility. So um, I am actually a lot in contact with the, with the youth from the region as well. And what I can tell you is that whenever we're speaking in between and whenever you would hear us talking, like uh, somehow we really love each other we want to see each other we want to help each other we want to work together we want to you know travel back and forth and visit so that obviously tells us that um there is no hate in between of young people we want to cooperate together but uh, somehow there is a lot of uh, maybe i can call it mass manipulation and people fall for it unfortunately 
and that is what what, what divide us. But uh, for sure, youth they want to cooperate together and they want to work together. But we are lacking the um, initiative from from let's say um, institutions, system institutions, in order for them to hear the voice of the youth to hear what we need, what we want. And we definitely need some concrete measures in order to create a, a better environment for, for youth, which goes back to the unemployment rate that we currently have in, in Montenegro, which is which is not very, very good. Mrs. Plana, let's go back into the bigger picture of what's going on now. The, Russia as a superpower, uh, member, permanent member of Security Council, have done uh, have invaded the country independent country uh, without warning with no kind of specific reason uh, where where this is heading to and whether the united states and nato was ready and the rest of Euro and the european union was ready for this kind of action from uh, russia specifically from vladimir putin um, the general understanding was that a full-on occupation was not going to happen. And looking back in the early 2000s, when Ukraine surrendered its nuclear power um, in exchange for sort of a promise, an understanding between Russia and Ukraine that Russia would not um, attack Ukraine in, in the future at all. Um, so that's, that agreement obviously no longer stands. Um, but historically, looking at what has been happening in the past decade or two, we can see how actually Russia could come to this conclusion and invade Ukraine. Um, in 2008, they invaded Georgia. In 2014, Crimea. This is a geopolitical game, obviously, for Putin. But we can, we can see how this was escalated in, in the past decade or two. Now, since Ukraine is not within NATO, as a member of NATO, um, U.S., Canada, as well as European Union have no obligation to interfere or to actually go to a military campaign in the country. And uh, looking at what has been going on for the United States in the past 20 years as well, engaging in wars in Iraq, Afghanistan, um, this was perhaps sort of a calculated opportunity by Putin to enter in Ukraine, believing that the U.S. will not be engaged in sanctions and definitely not in armed conflict with Russia directly in Ukraine. Um, in the near future, however, I believe that these sanctions are going to continue. Pressure is going to continue internationally. But militarily, unless another um, NATO is attacked, I do not foresee the U.S. engaging directly in Ukraine militarily. Uh, how is, is it, has uh, the experts anticipated of how long this conflict there is a chances to last, and whether the Ukraine fall under the Russian rules, and if so. What is the next step of European Union and NATO towards the homogenism of uh, uh, Russia uh, and creating the greater Russia over uh, claiming the land back to where, where before was the uh, Warsaw Pact? Yes, um, for Russia, the understanding perhaps came that this would be a quick, easy win, that Ukrainians would surrender very quickly and the war would not last, similarly to how it was in Georgia. Um, but that has been deemed wrong assessment as many Ukrainians, nearly 200,000 troops, as well as the civil society engaging against Russian's aggression, um, it has gone on much longer than Putin anticipated a quick win. Now, given that Russia has air power, um, perhaps in the long run, they will not win the war, but this battle would be, would be defeated um, and Ukrainians might be defeated. And this, this war, it is going to be ongoing. It's not 
anticipated to end any time soon. And the aggression is just increasing by day. Now, Russia is directly engaging in war crimes by targeting civilians, residential areas. Um, so we see that there are no intentions of stopping. Now, in terms of their membership to NATO, that is going to be difficult to be admitted at this time. Um, however, NATO has been putting in more troops, more efforts in Poland and throughout the eastern region um, to assist in deterring further attacks or from threat. Uh, we, do, we do see other sort of influences that are happening even in the Balkans, um, that sort of nationalist sentiment that has been happening with Vladimir Putin, it is spilling over in the Balkans as well. Um, so that's, that's concerning to say the least. So we, we will see what the European Union will do to engage the Western Balkans a little bit more. Uh, in hopes to we'll come back to you once more. Um, uh, just going to go back to um, Edina uh, or Mrs. Uh, Osmanovic. Uh, what uh, what do you think about those kind of uh, uh, people of Montenegro and region? They are now within thir 20 years, 30 years, has been promoted English language quite loads. So now the youth speaks English language and other languages that, that they get information from other other sources as well as from their own i'd say how did that affect or are they the the people of montenegro at least at this time they are aware of what's going on in in uh, in uh, between russia and uh, ukraine and how that's going to affect balkans or they still are somehow hidden under local nationalist propaganda Mm -hmm. um, regarding regarding the uh, English language and the languages first, um, definitely uh, a lot of people in Montenegro, especially youth, they uh, speak several languages, especially English, because as you know, Montenegro is a um, touristic country, is a small country, and um, a lot of our educational institutions, especially universities, are um, somehow fostering to, to uh, speak as much as you know youth can in English to go on youth exchanges, which is helping a lot um, in order to you know uh, learn better the language and understand the culture, uh, the cultures of others. Uh, regarding the um, other other question you told me, um, my personal opinion is that everyone is well aware of what is happening uh, with with russia and ukraine because it's all over the news it is happening so close to us um somehow when when people were talking about wars uh, at the east no one was uh, thinking so much about it even though that is also not 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 good but now when it's happening somehow in the Europe, everyone is just, you know, everyone's eyes are over there. Everyone is watching, looking what is going on. But I'm not sure uh, if everyone has the, the opinion, uh, as maybe the majority has or not, because my personal opinion is that there is no, no justification for any sort of aggression and for any sort of war because as i said before that is only pulling people back to misery to poverty to it's just torturing people and um, no one no one is winning a war they're in the war everyone is is losing everyone is losing that battle um in this kind of conflict which is a major conflict the the from the everyone says that from second world war we've never seen this uh, do you think that uh, um Europe, it's kind of, although it's two weeks time now since the crisis started, the Europe have forgotten that they have to deal with the young people, at least the young people should be informed what's going on, rather than leave into, like you said, to old fashioned governments that they actually try to brainwash uh, its own groups to, to kind of feed the conflict again. 
I think that European Union is doing is doing a lot in terms of um, giving a lot of funds, a lot of support towards um, education, towards the um, informal sector. And uh, I think that it's um, issue of Montenegro itself and their institutions. Uh, because they're not using the opportunities we are having and the opportunities that the European Union is maybe giving to us. Because this is a small country. If you create a good environment and one ecosystem that is viable, that is healthy for everyone, and if you give opportunities to everyone, it is just going to create a change. Because if you have one healthy leader, and a person that knows what means to volunteer, what means to give a bit, because um, I think the main issue at this society and in Montenegro is that uh, no one has has uh, been thought to volunteer. People need to learn that in order, you cannot take all the time for others. You need to give a bit in order to grow yourself, in order to become a better person. And once when we give the, the opportunity to the youth to volunteer a bit more, to express their creativity, uh, they're going to become better people. And if you give them the chance to um, maybe study abroad or go on some programs and, and trainings abroad, once when you give them the opportunity to be in the multicultural environment, they're going to love it and they're going to appreciate the, diver the, the diversity and they're just going to cherish it a lot. And in that case, you're not going to have youth who are full of hate or intolerance, just the opposite. You're going to have youth that are will to share their knowledge, that are will, will to learn, to improve, to be creative, innovative and to change the country because we cannot think, oh, we'll leave the country. We need to, to um, think in terms of what can I do today in order for myself to be better, in order for my community to be better, in order for my family and friends and country to be better. And once when we put that inside of our heads, I think that is be the moment when we are going to, to move forwards towards a you know economic growth or, or a better better definitely situation. Um. Ms. Planak, can we, uh, in relation to what uh, Mrs. Osmanovic said so far and suggested, uh, you've been in Kosovo for a few months, uh, just uh, last summer. Uh, what should or what should the young, uh, what what could the young people of Kosovo and region do in order for them to take a bit positive, more positive uh, path towards the future? So the option would not be there just to leave the country, but actually to make it in the country, their future and their career. Uh, for one minute, if you can forget the war in Russia uh, and Ukraine, what else do you think could, could happen to young people? Um, Kosovo's youth is very capable, just as Adina mentioned um, in Montenegro, similarly in Kosovo. They are very well educated youth. They speak multiple languages anywhere you went, really no difficulties. They were ready speaking um, English. What do they want is opportunity, whether it is education and employment. Unemployment rates are drastically still quite high in Kosovo. Um, but that sort of nostalgia from the past doesn't exist with the youth. They are far more engaged, far more appreciative and able to communicate with one another even across ethnic lines um, so that sort of patriotism exists but nationalism is no longer a quality there thankfully um, so what another thing that kosovars are like in the kosovo youth is the ability to travel um, freely it is the only country in europe that doesn't have the opportunities for free tourism, uh, educational opportunities elsewhere. So that's that is exactly what is missing. Um, stability, employment opportunities, and travel education restrictions. Um, Mrs. Uh, Osmanovic, you've got those opportunities to travel. 
to see the world, to go in Europe, whatever you want. Well, that makes it better than what used to be before, considering that the minimum wage in Montenegro is not great. Do they still have ability to make money and to actually go and spend somewhere else? Uh, like Valona said, for Kosovars. Um, I definitely have to, to comment what uh, Valona said. I had, the, I had the chance to study in US as well, to study in Europe and Spain and to be part of a lot of training courses and educational programs throughout the Europe. And I think I'm definitely a, a lucky person because I had a chance to do that because those mobility programs made me a person I am today. I somehow have a feeling that I became a better version of myself just because I got a chance to go abroad, see how the world works and uh, come back home and say, okay, this is the thing that we don't have. Maybe we should implement it. This is the thing that is not good. Maybe we should fix it. And that is the whole point of, of this mobility programs. And as Valona said, unfortunately, young people and people from Kosovo do not get a chance and uh, to, to go abroad to see maybe what, what youth from Montenegro have the ability and opportunity to see. And um, I'm really hoping that that will, that will change. Um, according to, the, um, to your question, I think that um, there is a lot of, definitely a lot of um, educated youth in Montenegro which are very capable, intelligent, innovative, and um, if, when you mentioned the, the wage, uh, the, the new government, the one that is um, currently not, not existing or, or uh, however you, you can name it, um, the complicated one, um, they implemented one, one system called um, Europe Now. And uh, the, the, from, from this year, we got the minimum wage being 100, uh, 450 euros. Everyone was very, very happy according to that. But on the other sa side, you have um, a lot of increases in, in, uh, um, in, in markets and restaurants. Everyone, how it works. Everyone is blaming now the new system and talking that, oh, look, what sort of system they implemented. They raised the salaries, but, but again, they increased the, the um, you know, prices of the goods, which is not really like that, because if you look at the situation abroad, it's all connected and we're the system that is working, you know, uh, that it's interconnected and everything is copy and paste in the other system. The situation, I have to be realistic, it's, it's not good, but I hope that if we invest towards towards youth, towards um, entrepreneurship, innovation and digitalization, we do have a big opportunities to move forward the, the um, economic growth and to prosper as a country. And I think our best chance are the youth because they've been abroad, they've seen, they're really innovative and they know new ways of how to how to move forward and, and be part of this global world. And I think that is also one of the ways to connect the, the Western Balkans, to connect the region and make it prosper and move forwards. Because once when you give the opportunity to the youth to do something, to be creative, to earn their own money, they're gonna make a change and they're gonna move forward. I've been in, in that environment of um, you know startups and entrepreneurs and it's amazing how much energy among those people is and uh, you cannot be optimistic after you see that only we need we need a bit of push from the government itself itself and a bit of um, reform in the system let's say and before i go to valona uh, i will uh, i will uh, ask you one more question about the uh, your activities uh, you are quite active on, uh, on, on, like you said, in a civil kind of uh, and young youth people engagement. Have you ever thought that it would be a good idea in this kind of crisis to kind of create some kind of uh, initiative of region together with Macedonia maybe and Kosovo for, to promote the Kosovo young people into Europe and uh, more or less 
to ease the restrictions, to raise the voice of reason, the restrictions for that part of the world as well, at least for young people who wants to study abroad. Mm -hmm. Um, I was I was definitely thinking of ways how should we connect the region. Therefore, um, I founded a uh, one app, uh, which is a platform which is called With Me Global. It's a platform for connecting youth, which is going to give a lot of um, opportunities for youth. And the first phase of the project is to implement it in the Western Balkan and give the opportunity to youth from the countries of Kosovo, Macedonia, Albania, Bosnia, Serbia, Croatia to work on the project and to, you know, make something together because I want us to work together as we should work together and be, uh, be successful in whatever we're doing. But as I said, we're only one small part in the system and alone we cannot do much. We can, we can make a change, obviously, but we all need to do a bit. And once when we gather that, maybe we will have the strength to go to the institutions and say, okay, you should give the chance to the youth in Kosovo or in Macedonia to, to move forward, to have the chances that, that we are having. So in order to make us more stronger, we need to become stronger as well. So I don't think that the youth in, in, in the whole region um, are still awakened in sense, okay, like let's do something together, let's move forward, let's work, let's work together. So that is the initiative and the leadership that maybe we're lacking these days. And uh, hopefully we will, we will got, got to see it. Out of curiosity, that app that you just mentioned, uh, I'd would, I would like to hear the name of it again for sake of uh, our uh, viewers, they may want to engage in it. Um, whether that's just uh, in, in one language or it's a multi-language uh, down the app? Uh, for the beginning, uh, it is going to be in uh, English language, but afterwards we're going to make the system which is going to translate it for every country that the app is going to, to be working. So there is going to be a system which is immediately going to translate the app on multiple languages. Uh, uh, Mrs. Blana, can you um, help me to understand a little bit on those crises between Russia and Ukraine? This is unpredicted. What's going to happen tomorrow? We don't know. But we know that in the Balkan region, we have uh, Serbia that uh, have an election now. We got Montenegro with no uh, stable government. We got Kosovo that kind of start campaign already to join NATO and to join European Union. And certainly uh, asking for five countries to be recognized by of European Union that haven't done yet. Uh, there was our president in Turkey to actually encourage Turkish government to do a bit more uh, for, to campaign for uh, Kosovo to join NATO plus to have uh, the few other countries that uh, Turkey have relation with to push them for recognition. What do you think about all this? What's going to be, a, how, how, do, how can you make it a bit more simple to know what we expect for this kind of movements that are happening now? From the international perspective, particularly from the U.S. and European Union, uh, the conflict between Russia or the war um, in Ukraine, that might just push European Union to engage the Western Balkans a little bit more. The integration process of some of the states in the Western Balkans was halted for numerous years now. This might begin to open the talks again and negotiations um, and engage the, the nations in the Western Balkans. On the downside of it, uh, this nationalism is brewing yet again in Bosnia, in Serbia, as well as we've seen some indications in Montenegro too, where either through the Orthodox Church, um, through Russian intelligence agents in Montenegro, the efforts have been there to destabilize the region. Um, if that takes hold, it is going to be a quite dangerous position for the Western Balkans, and it might be a repeated 1990s um, wars in, in the region. However, 
as I stated before, the positive side of it, it might just be to sort of rush the process towards a European integration. Um, thus, even for Serbia, it would push Serbia to uphold democratic values per EU standards, um, perhaps also recognize Kosovo in exchange for integration, economic development and such. Um, how about the campaign that they start for uh, Kosovo to join NATO, European Union? Do you have an idea of how that's going to be effective or whether it's a time for it now to raise the voice or do you think it was a bit immature? Um, no, the time has been before, time is now, um, but the question is whether that's going to happen or not and in the near future that might not happen. However, Kosovo is in the position that um, it is highly unlikely to be attacked due to the international organization concentration in the country where NATO has a great presence um, as well multiple other organizations. The OSCE too, which uh, sort of tracks all the stability or democratic processes or any um, difficulties coming from Serbia or elsewhere. So for Kosovo, it would be, I'm not too afraid that would be attacked or there would be a conflict there just now. But if it is becoming a regional problem where um, an engagement happens in Bosnia and Herzegovina, that quickly could spread to both Montenegro, Kosovo, um, possibly Croatia as well as North Macedonia. Um, um, Mrs. Osmanovic, what do you think, what, what is your opinion or what do you understand uh, based on your based on your work in Montenegro now? Do you think the young people still think that leave in Montenegro for Europe it's better, or do you think that mentality has changed since the freedom of movement have been offered to Montenegrian people? Um, yes. So the. Um the analysis that have been done in Montenegro are showing that um, the majority of youth are very happy towards the EU int integrations and that um, everyone is looking forward to that. And I think Montenegro is um, probably the, the first next um, country that is going to be part of the EU, uh, which is great. And um, the only problem we are having in Montenegro is that um, around 70% of youth said that they would love to leave Montenegro because of the high rate of unemployment, because of um, a lot of political insecurity and instability, and because of the, the whole situation that happened in the last two years, which is not giving them hope that things will change. Uh, so maybe there is a bit of um, a bit of a tricky situation, what will happen when uh, once we become part of the EU? That is a question, what if, you know, youth just start going out and not coming back or what will happen? But um, I'm, I'm being optimistic and positive and I think that um, everyone is uh, who lives in Montenegro is, is in a way in love with Montenegro because we have a lot of natural beauties and it's definitely one of the, you know, very, very beautiful country. Uh, rich in, in, in a lot of senses and um, I think as I said before once the um, Montenegrin youth get the opportunity to study abroad to move abroad to uh, you know get educated and, and uh, get outside of the borders uh, they will want to come back eventually and to give something back to their to their own country so I think that is a positive thing for Montenegro in, in a lot of ways to, to be part of, of the European Union. Uh, going back once more to uh, young people, apart from, mm -hmm. uh, from uh, wanting to leave because of jobs, do you think that it's in uh, small countries there is a small place for the young people to have their uh, privacy, to have their um, engagement with society a bit more conservative? Do you think that any idea of 
creating in um, uh, Podgorica some kind of day of young people from Pristina or weekend from uh, Tirana or um, let's say another weekend from Belgrade or something where the young people moving from country to a country for their um, weekend out to have fun rather than just uh, keeping the young people within the small communities and making them feel bored because I think that's another fact that young people of region leaving the town because they want to explore not just what the world have to offer them but also their freedom which I consider it's not just because of government but it's because of the conservative society that exists there. Uh, I think that um, a lot of uh, Montenegrin NGO organ organizations are doing actually right that. Um, I witnessed a lot of projects, a lot of programs, a lot of training courses where the whole region is involved. And um, I think Montenegro is doing a lot in, in those terms. Um, I think that Montenegro is definitely cherishing the the um, you know uh, opening their, their borders for everyone and um, we're obviously open open and we're welcoming everyone and we're always very friendly towards uh, all countries of the of the region as i said regarding regarding the youth i've witnessed myself that there is a lot of um, projects and um, courses which are also uh, funded a lot of them by the eu that they're fostering the relations of the western balkans on several topics. It can be entrepreneurship, woman entrepreneurship, it can be um, human rights, democracy, and, and so on. So I think the youth from the region are definitely moving from the country to the country and, and working together. Maybe that is not promoted too much, so people don't know what is happening inside inside the um, you know cities or the country itself. But I think we're having a, a certain progress in that in that term for sure. Uh, thanks for that, uh, uh, Mrs. Plana. What do you think about uh, the region again? Kosovo at the moment have the most stable government, and Kosovo government is one of the, I would say, first clearly elected government. There was no fault, but the vote went fifty percent to one side that they claim to be non-corrupted government. What do you think having a Kosovo into center of government of Serbia, gov government of Albania, uh, Macedonia, Montenegro, do you think they set in some kind of example or do you think that they are under pressure for being unique in this case? In positive aspect, I would say. It is quite a positive aspect to have um in place in Kosovo and independently from what has been going on internally in other um, Balkan nations, the goals for this administration in Kosovo appear to be towards a European Union, towards the integration, prosperity of the country, um, neutrality or recognition by Serbia. That's another campaign that they have at hand, which just as you stated, makes it quite capable and hopefully very effective in the near future. And given what has been going on um, internationally in Europe, um, we just might have a chance in Kosovo for a Kosovo, whether it is liberalization, um, recognition of Kosovo by Serbia and multiple other states as well as an open channel to membership union and NATO. Um, Mr. Osmanovic, we're going towards the end of the program. Uh, I'd like to ask you, considering that uh, Valona, she's an expert in the international relation, do you have any question that you can raise uh, to Valona about what you'd like to see or what suggestions she have that the governments of a region can help your activities to bring the young people together more? 
Uh, I was I was just thinking to say thanks to you, Sabri, for um, introducing uh, Valona to me and for having us both uh, at your show because uh, I got a chance to to talk with her a, a bit more before the program, and um, I'm very happy that there is a, a person as as she is that is so successful and open to talk about a, a lot of things. So um, my, my questions toward, uh, toward you, Valona, would uh, be, um, what do you think, can, um, can, can we as, as youth entrepreneurs, as youth innovators, really uh, make such a big impact that um, we move forward and we make um, the Western Balkans um, as an example of that, that Thing that nothing is impossible as long as you work together, as long as you are enthusiastic and cooperative. Do you can you see us as really you know bonded together and, and working toward a global world and being someone who's going to be an example of how how you can you know gather youth and um, their skills and innovation and create something amazing which can connect them and, and foster them. Do you think that can happen? Um, well, you've already mentioned a couple of things that you're doing towards the participation of different ethnic groups, religious groups, um, and so on in the bulk. And so that is a major positive step that the youth can continue to follow. Um, further integration, um, student exchange programs, that's an amazing way for each of nationality in the Western Balkans to sort of get to know the other side because if there is a break in between groups then it is difficult to understand the other's perspective and once you have an interconnection then of course um, you see the human on the other side you don't just see the aggressor or the opposer or of that so sort of to engage the youth, youth in um, as I stated, student exchange programs, there are multiple initiatives and one of them being the youth initiative that is present in multiple countries. Uh, through the youth initiative, um, students as long as even in high school and even younger um, can participate in programs. They go and play football or um, they go and see movies, they develop they actually participate as actors in movies and that is a great way to build friendship among ethnic and to sort of decrease that past um, nationalism aspect of, of the Balkans that is incorrectly always known globally to be a very uh, negative impact in the region. So. Just keep going and engaging in these organizations that you have developed and initiatives. Um, that is a great way to prosper throughout throughout the region. Um, thank you. In the end, uh, I uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, Mrs. Uh, Osmanovic or Edina, and uh, you, uh, Mrs. Plana, for sparing a time and giving out all this information and also the positive feedback for what people of region can do to make better their life and possibly avoid the old fashion of uh, politics and uh, hopefully be in your hands to improve the relation and to see the world from different perspective within that region. Thank you very much for giving this opportunity and it was great speaking um, to you on the show once again and getting to know Idina personally yesterday as well as um, her input today, which is very valuable. Thank you again. Um, thank you, Idina. Uh, thank you. Great to have you. Thank you again. Sorry, the voice went went really back. I want to say thanks as well for inviting me at the program and for introducing me with Falona. And uh, I want to say that this is a great way to share experiences and to see that 
really together we can move forward and definitely make our countries and our region a better place. So thanks. Thank you again and thank you very much for setting a fantastic example of how young people should move forward and should see the future. Teleshikusal UK TV ishte zonja valona plana njose mirë lvizjeve apo raporteve ndërkomtare të shteteve dhe të politikave, një kosë është Edina Osmanovic, e cila ishte një banore malit e zi dhe njose e mirë edhe që lëvizje në Evropë, njose e mirë e mënyre së punës me të rritë, angazhimet dhe një shembuj jashtë zakonisht të rëndësishëm se si të rritë duhet të bashkohen dhe të thojnë mënyre së vjetër të keç trajtimit të njerit, nacionalitet në logaritet tjetërit, deri sa se gjerën të kryohen ura bashkëpunimi dhe që generatat e reja të japin shembujt mirë se si jetohet edhe Balkani si të përmirësohet që tjetë vend ku jetojnë të rritë dhe ku jetojnë populatën për gjithësi, nga onë sa breagimi natën e mirë e miru pafshum në emisionet e radhës.